He says he's a scapegoat because he did nothing that other Welshmen, including current internationals, have done before. The League's campaign to break what they regard as the Union's archaic attitude has already got the support of MPs and lawyers. If the going really gets rough, the League says it will name top Welsh Union players who've had trials in the North. That move would certainly send shivers through Welsh Rugby Union's hierarchy. The Welsh, meanwhile, are still smarting over the defection of their much-capped Terry Holmes, who was signed by Bradford for a record fee. There'll be many a union diehard not sorry to have seen him injured in his first game. The League are confident of their legal advice. We shall certainly follow the legal option to test the validity of the international board ruling under which the Welsh Rugby Union have acted. If the League is to triumph in a court of law, the legal conflict could be as divisive as the row that split the game 90 years ago. Brent Sadler, News at 10, Leeds. Soccer, the only FA Cup game to survive the weather, was at Spurs. Highlights of that match can be seen in most ITV areas after the news. In the Cannon League, near the top, 4th Division, Hartlepool 1, Chester 1. The weathermen say motorists will have to cope with black ice tomorrow as overnight frost makes wet roads treacherous. But a slow thaw is predicted over the next couple of days. Much of the country spent the day under snow. Ten inches fell in Derbyshire. In the frozen north, cars couldn't be moved, pedestrians couldn't keep their feet. Motorists struggled to get going. Two died in crashes on hazardous roads. In the Midlands, many drivers simply abandoned their cars. Several roads here were blocked. A police spokesman advised people to take with them a bag of sand, a pair of boots and a shovel. East Midlands Airport was closed all day. Four snowplows broke down, trying to clear the runways. In Derbyshire, 10 inches of snow fell in some areas, 12 major roads were impassable, and as the snow plows cleared away, the wind blew the snow back. Some villages were cut off, three roads leading into the town of Buxton were closed. Yorkshire fire eater Clary Butler used his own special skills to clear away the snow. The weathermen say he'll have to tackle black ice tomorrow. And the main news again, President Reagan has frozen all Libyan assets in the United States, but Britain is not joining America in economic sanctions against Libya. Police at Heathrow are to be armed with submachine guns, and the Bank of England has forced interest rates up by 1%. Finally, a British sailor has got a medal almost a century and a half after he froze to death on an ill-fated Arctic expedition. Able seaman John Hartnell's body was found last year perfectly preserved in ice. Today in London, a relative was presented with the medal. It's taken 139 years for able seaman John Hartnell's Arctic medal to be handed over at last to his family. And it's the last chapter in a tragic story that ended with his death in the wastes of the Canadian Arctic three generations ago. How do you feel about receiving the medal today? Well, I think it's absolutely marvellous. It's history come to life. The perfectly preserved bodies of John Hartnell and another member of the ill-fated hydrographic expedition were recently discovered under the ice. They'd been buried hastily, but with proper ceremony and a simple headstone erected to their memory. John Hartnell's family were not given the medal when his death was announced because he died in debt to the Crown, owing £117. But now Mr Bray hopes to go out to Canada to see for himself the famous Northwest Passage his ancestor died trying to help discover. Jeremy Hands, News at 10, London. And the Admiralty's books are up to date. That's the news tonight. Good night. Good evening. The Army hit back tonight at suggestions that there was a high radiation risk for people living near weapons research establishments in Berkshire. A senior Army safety officer described safety at the bases as remarkably good. He was speaking at a meeting of anxious residents. The meeting was at Burfield, where Britain's nuclear weapons are made at the Royal Ordnance Factory. Parents living near to the site and to the one at Aldermaston are worried that leukaemia deaths among children under 10 are five times higher in this area than the national average, and the meeting heard a call for an independent inquiry. As you may have heard on News at 10, a firebomb has been planted beneath the car of a director of an animal research establishment in Sussex. It was put there by the Animal Rights Militia. 
It was hidden under the car of Mr. Peter Savage outside his home at Stenning near Shoreham. People were evacuated as army experts set off the device in a control explosion. Mr. Savage is sales director of the Henfield-based Shamrock Farm Group, who import monkeys for research. A greengrocer apprehended a gunman this afternoon after a raid on a jeweller's next door to his shop at Hove in Sussex. The two men produced handguns at Williams Jeweller's shop in Church Road. They sprayed the owner with ammonia, but fled empty-handed after a struggle. The greengrocer, Gary Preston, ran out of his shop and, with the help of two passers-by, held on to the man until police arrived. The captain of the QE2 was fined £200 today for failing to report an infectious disease. Captain Lawrence Portet did not tell the Port Authority in Southampton that one of the passengers had meningitis. Lavinia, Duchess of Norfolk, tonight presented a special award to a girl guide from Sussex. 13-year-old Marianne Ralston from Yapton got the Star of Merit for fortitude in the face of adversity. Marianne suffers from a rare form of leukaemia. She has skin sensitivity, deafness, high blood pressure, asthma and epilepsy, but she's still a keen member of the local guides. She says she's not special, but a guide spokeswoman says nobody deserves the award more than Marianne. Finally, the weather, there'll be drizzle at times tonight and in some parts a little sleet and hill fog. Lowest temperatures will be about one degree centigrade. Tomorrow will be generally dry but mostly cloudy. It'll be cold with highest temperatures only four degrees centigrade. Winds will be variable and light. And that's it. New this Friday at 10.30 from Television South, Facing South, with the major stories that matter to all of us in the South and Southeast. The series gets off to a dramatic start with a disturbing investigation into the threat posed by new extreme animal rights groups. A group calling itself the Animal Rights Militia unveils a cool and calculated plan to maim and murder until all animal experiments are ended. Whose lives are at risk? What can we do to meet this new terrorist threat? Watch Facing South this Friday at 10.30 on Television South.